let's take a look at our top selections. Dan Omen, Mike Beer, the feature race on a big Saturday card at Churchill Downs, race number 11. Let's take a look at the field for the grade two $600,000 Stephen Foster. Very familiar name is the odds on favorite on the morning line. That's the eight Maxfield. He's simply one of the better handicap horses in training, Mike. And on paper, he's way the horse to beat. Yeah, he is. He finally um, popped that big figure. I think everybody was waiting for last time in the Ali Sheba, Dan. And if he backs it up in this field, he's going to be awful hard to beat. We take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. And Maxfield's a horse that can adapt. He came from 11 lengths out of it to win the mine shaft at Fairgrounds. He sat closer to the pace last time in the Ali Sheba. And I kind of agree with time form U.S. He'll probably be sitting in the second or third flight. Warriors charge, though, if he makes the lead, he can be dangerous. And there have been situations with Warriors charge where they either try to rate him or he completely misses the break. And then he loses all chance. Warriors charge, according to the pace projector, should be able to make the lead here. The question is, how far does he want to go and how good is he at this point? Yeah, those are, are valid questions um, that he's going to have to answer on the track um, come Saturday. But I agree with the pace projector. I mean, he's supposed to be on the early lead in here. And there are times when he gets out there on the front, he forgets to stop. Chess Chief, the number one, goes out for Dallas Stewart. He's had a very underrated campaign. He won the New Orleans Classic two starts back at this distance. That race sandwiched in between a couple of graded stakes placings, but no match for Maxfield last time out on the mine shaft. Yeah, I mean, he ran his typical race in there. Um, it just turned out to be a much faster race than he's used to, and he couldn't really keep up in there. No threat finishing third at the end. Very consistent. Um, he can get uh, the right kind of trip in here from his inside draw, Dan. He doesn't have to be that far away. I just don't know if he's this good. Three of Empty Tomb's four lifetime wins have come around one turn, including his most recent start, a mile at Churchill Downs, and now winners of three other than Nice Ride by Tyler Gaffalio. Not a ton of pace in front. He got right up close, and he was able to take care of the runner-up that would come back to win with a 94 buyer. Not sure he's this good. Yeah, I've never really liked this horse that much either, but he does have good tactical speed. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ricardo Santana try to come out of there running. Necker Island is the number three. Nice win last time out. Going the one-turn mile at Churchill Downs it was only his second start of the year. Something tells me this horse is slowly racing himself back into shape. And he had a useful three-year-old campaign in some of the, the minor derbies. Again, the question is, is he really ready to take on a horse like Maxfield? From a speed figure standpoint, the answer is no. Yeah, he's going to have to improve to win. This is a horse, though, it sort of felt like early on he was cut out to be a pretty nice horse. Listen, these connections reached in for a hundred grand for this horse. Um, and you know, they've been running him in some pretty tough races. They tried to derby with them last year to no real avail. He's third off the layoff now, and it does feel like he's improved so far. Sprawl's another horse that can be forwardly placed if something happens to the Mercurial Warriors charge coming out of the gate. Big winner over Sloppy Track, two starts back. And then last time out in the blame, I thought it was a game performance. It was one of those bunched up three horse finishes. I'm not sure what I think about that, but he is in good form. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, I feel like last time he ran fine and I feel, you know, you could probably watch it and think eh, if he got a little bit, uh, a, a little bit more luck in that race, he could have won. Um, on the other hand, I just felt like when I watched it, he was in a great position all the way around there. And maybe he should have won that race and he just kind of didn't get it done. I'm, I'm a fan of this horse. I've liked him from, from a long way out there and I still like him. I just couldn't talk myself into him in here. Silver Dust is such a cool horse. He's been banging around in graded stakes races since 2017, and he finally got it done at a mile and an eighth, which has always been the big bugaboo for this horse. Let's watch the Ben Alai at Keeneland last time out, and he got right up close to the pace. He's a very tactical horse. He really guts it out over Night Ops, who would come back to run second in the blame with a 93 buyer. Uh, he's versatile enough where he can adapt to the pace, listed as a vet scratch, however, on May 29th. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a really cool horse, um, and this is definitely a race where he can be competitive, Dan. Um, he tends to show up um, in all of his starts. He can get any kind of a trip in here. I love to see him win this race here going the nine furlongs, um, the little bit shorter distance uh, um, of this race. Um, a, a little bit shorter of this race could have helped him, but he's got to get the nine furlongs again. And I, I don't know. I still feel like even though he got it last time, it's not his preferred uh, distance to go. 
Warriors charge the six. The expected pace setter is a multiple graded stakes winner, and you can make excuses perhaps for some of his races this year. That allowance race at Oakland off the layoff, he probably should have won that race, but again, he didn't make the lead, and he was coming off of the bench. In the Oakland handicap, he was in against Silver State, who's one of the top three handicap horses in the country, and the Steve Sexton mile is simply a pitch after he broke poorly. Yeah, he, he has a big excuse last time. Um, prior to that, I guess his form was okay. I do respect his speed. I think he's dangerous sometimes. Um, he's not a great price on the line. I would never bet him at 6-1. to one. If he drifts off that, I'll take another look. Mike, can you make a case at least for a, a board play at a big price for the 7 South Bend? This is a horse that's always been very consistent, whether it be on turf and on dirt. And they ran him on dirt last time out in the blame, and things just didn't work out for him that day. Yeah, that's true enough. Uh, you know, when you go back and watch it, you, you see him trying to sort of split horses in the stretch to get himself into contention. And he just gets totally shut off, doesn't make it through the hole. I don't think it was uh, Gaffelion's fault. I thought he did the right thing that he didn't want to go all the way around and he briefly had room and then he just didn't make it through and he lost all chance in there. So give him a pass for that one. His race two back was fine where he came down the outside and got up late um, with a 93 buyer speed figure too. I think he'll get the distance just fine as well. He needs a little bit of pace in front of him, but he should get it. Brendan Walsh has gotten Maxfield healthy. Maxfield is happy. 105 buyer speed figure, as you mentioned, in the Ali Sheeb, and he just dominated that race. Never looked like a loser. Yeah, he was just too good for that field. He got a really good trip. Um, always looked like he was going to win, and he did win, and he finally got the figure for it too. I mean, I don't know. We'll see how short he goes, Dan. You know, it's really only the last race that makes him a, a, a real standout in here, but in a lot of ways, it just feels like he's the best horse. We kind of expected Visitant to run a good race. He's always been an underrated horse on synthetic, and he ran a good race in the Ali Sheba last time out. I liked what they did. They took the race to the rest of the field. Maxfield was just better than he was on this day. I wonder if maybe they tried different tactics, sort of the tactics that led to his uh, good effort in the Kentucky Cup Classic, or maybe this time they follow Maxfield and try to get towed into it. Yeah, maybe they'll do that. We'll see how aggressive the other horses get towards to the inside in this race. Um, he ran really well last time. You know, it really never looked like he was going to win um, from about the top of the stretch in there. But man, he did not give in um, readily through the stretch there. He fought all the way down to the right. That was a really good performance from this horse. We'll see if he can back it up. Absolutely right. This horse has no quit whatsoever. And go back and watch that Kentucky Cup at a mile and an eighth. Boy, he was wide every step and was better than Set Piece, who's a pretty good synthetic turf horse. We'll see him earlier on the Churchill Saturday card. Top pick time for the grade two Stephen Foster. Got to go with Maxfield, at least uh, on his form. He just looks like the horse to beat, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. And, you know, personally, Dan, I just didn't see the alternative that I could really latch on to in here to try to make a, a good case for. So I'm just going to take the favorite here. 8457 for Mike, 8926 for me. It's the Stephen Foster feature race at Churchill Downs on Saturday, featuring one of the best handicap horses in the country in Maxfield.